purpose is is a definition but it doesn't have to be defining if you get what I mean um, you get to define what your definition for yourself is and what your definition for the purpose in your life is and just understand that your that definition of what you uh, what you think of as a purpose in life is not unchangeable how you doing I'm Kevin O'Hara for Habit Speed 2 today I want to talk about a purpose in life uh, and to really help people who think that they've got no purpose in life these are the hundred videos in a hundred days we're trying to help as many people to get across that line and to stop drinking alcohol as possible um, and you can help us out by sharing these videos by liking them uh, leaving a comment down below I really want to know what you think of um, the video so far uh, any suggestions that you might have for future videos so um, in one of the previous videos we talked about um, sort of as a side issue get into 50 or 60 or 70 years of age and so on and and feeling that you weren't uh, contributing anymore that you weren't productive anymore um, from my perspective I want to be uh, as productive as I can be um, right up until the end until my last breath so to speak and hopefully past that you know and the reason uh, you can you can have an influence past when you're living because of the influence that you have on your family and your children, for instance, or the things that you leave behind, you know, maybe a workspace that you leave behind, maybe a product that you leave behind, maybe work that you've done that continues to have an influence afterwards. And that is what I hope for, for myself, that there is at least a, not a marking of me when I pass, but that I uh, leave the world in a slightly, slightly better place than when I got it from my own perspective, right? Um, you know, this is this is all about purpose in life and about trying to find uh, meaning, a meaning in the everyday. You know, the title of this video says that you have a Hollywood purpose, and I mean by that, I'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. But I'm talking about more finding purpose in it from an individual level. If you really want a good idea of how this works, have a look at. Um, a guy called Victor, Victor Frankl and he wrote uh, a book called Man's Search for Meaning and there's also a woman on a similar vein um, called Edith Egger, Dr. Edith Egger and she wrote a book called The Choice. And both of these books, um, their, I suppose their key topic is, um, their background is these two people were both in concentration camps during the Second World War, uh, Nazi concentration camps as Jews. Um, and they went through the Holocaust and survived it. And after that, then they tell their stories. Um, Dr. Frankel was a guy who invented logotherapy, and uh, Dr. Egger, she uh, was a practicing, I think, psychotherapist um, for all her life. And she was practicing, I think, into her, um, I'm not sure if she's still alive, uh, but she was definitely practicing well into her, her um, old age. Um, so have a look at these books if you want something to read in terms of finding purpose in the most dire circumstances. What I mean by the title of um, Do You Need a Hollywood Purpose? However laudable these purposes are generally portrayed in, in movies, the purpose of life, uh, um, why people are living, they really don't reflect reality. Um, you know, people think that their purpose must be self-defining right so um, self-defining on a on a very grandiose scale you know and when you're not doing that i think it, it gives people this feeling of um inferiority uh, towards other people and to what to what they see uh, and i mean by that purpose self-defining purpose on a, on a on a grandiose scale in in the sense of becoming a world champion in something um you know going out and saving the, the planet from a life-ending meteor, that kind of thing. Um, you know, allowing all the, the men and women and children to to get onto the lifeboats and you wave as you're, as the boat is sinking down and you're going into the depths of the sea, that kind of thing. You know, like I said, a bit tongue-in-cheek, but uh, however laudable these things are, they're just outside of the scope of most people in life, you know. Um, so... I want to look at things from a very down-to-earth, very uh, ungrandiose 
perspective uh, and I mean that with all humility right and the, the the things that I get the most pleasure out of in my life is being a dad being a granddad being a teacher um, and if I look at my life and if I could look at some of the things some of the areas where if I could take my life over again what would I go into it would be the teacher or I would go into uh, maybe the medical profession that's always attractive to me or the military the police I think that is for me would be big contribution um, and with the purpose of you know there's there's some people that get lost in their purpose but in general I think these professions these people their purpose tends to um, be very laudable uh, and on a very basic level right and I'm saying that from the perspective of these are normal jobs normal people and um, you know this is I think a lot a lot of what people view in the world now as being laudable what attracts people's attention tends to be what is um, politically expedient or uh, you know what 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 really goes for their side of the the way they view the world the way they um, they view the world from a, from a political standpoint or a moral standpoint I don't think it's coming very much from a, a value standpoint um, because I think a lot of people what they're doing is they're they, they've got these high values that they preach about but their own personal values are not holding up to that kind of thing I think Jordan Peterson said it best with clean your own room first before you start messing around with um, or expecting the world to change around you that kind of thing so um, if you're looking for something that is going to be cute in the moment then you know th this is this is the definition that, that um, of that kind of Hollywood mentality right I hope I'm making sense in this I think that purpose is is a definition but it doesn't have to be defining if you get what I mean um, you get to define what your definition for yourself is and what your definition for the purpose in your life is and just understand that your that definition of what you uh, what you think of as a purpose in life is not unchangeable that you can change this it's not permanent right people have go through different periods I mean before my son was born I wasn't a parent before my granddaughter was born I wasn't a granddad so those that purpose in life was even though it was something that I looked out towards my future and I thought it's going to be cool one day when I become a dad and when I become a grandparent when I do this when I do that it's not the defining purpose of my life in that moment so you have to look at things where, where what is it now that you're doing that is defining for you um, I'll give you a really good example from I talked spoke about before about my dad quitting drinking alcohol and he went into the hospital um, and he went into the hospital stopped drinking alcohol af after he came out of hospital because he basically survived what they said he wasn't going to survive and his purpose then um, was to be uh, he was always a down-to-earth bloke right he was always a very uh, humble man um, he was a hard worker went out working hard all his life and you know towards the end of his life when he stopped drinking when he was 80 and you know he was frail towards that that end um, because of some of the choices that he made during his life in terms of, uh, of the alcohol although he didn't drink much but mostly with food nutrition and uh, yeah that stopped him from from doing a lot in his in his latter life but he was there as a uh, um, as a parent to nine kids and as a grandparent to I can't don't ask me how many grandparents or grandchildren he had but from the perspective of um, where my dad was he he attended a wedding that he wouldn't have attended otherwise if he hadn't stopped uh, if he hadn't changed his life to a certain degree um, he attended a wedding he saw the birth of two of his grandchildren and that he wouldn't have seen if, if he hadn't stopped so there were so many moments that he was there for us um, as a family like I said there's nine kids and we got to, to experience him for another four years of his life uh, in our lives do you know what I mean so that his purpose then even though he couldn't physically do a lot you know he was walking around with a walking stick and you know, he couldn't physically do a lot um, he was there for us so that's what I'm saying about purpose there's a lot of there's a lot to be said for 
the person just being there and just be in that role be in that um, patriarch in the family um, you know and that was well appreciated by all of us and one of the purposes of us putting out these videos is to try and help as many people as we can to stop drinking alcohol so uh, we've got our platform on www.habitsv2.com uh, there's a lot of different videos in there there's daily videos we've got um, a forum we've got one-on-one uh, -on -one sessions if you want one-on-one -on -one sessions with me we've got uh, live zoom calls that we have with uh, the whole group of people they're great fun um, and we've also got if you want something for free we've got our quick start a quick start preparation guide which you can find by clicking on the link down below this video uh, and that's to try and give you as much confidence and clarity and um, courage to step across that line and to try and uh, at least start that journey towards getting to the best possible version of yourself so it's absolutely free click on the link leave your name and email address and I'll send it out to you so just as um, as a final message I'll repeat what I said before that your purpose is a definition but it's not something that has to define you permanently right it's more of uh, of you define who you are in the moment and there's multiple definitions multiple reasons for being here you know it doesn't have to be one definition you know like I, I consider myself to be a teacher in one part I'm a dad at one stage I'm a, uh, I'm a partner for Esther um, a granddad for uh, for Holly and you know so that's multiple dimensions it's multiple purposes in, in your life but um, I want you to look at it from the perspective of there was a guy I was reading about so I think it was on the lad Bible they have um, they have some of these short stories uh, where they get an individual and they highlight a certain individual's life. And there was one guy who was diagnosed with terminal prostate cancer, and he said um, basically he was devastated when he was obviously when he was given the news of this. Um, and he said the first thing that himself and his wife did was burst into tears. And then it was coming around and accepting things. And then he started to think about not only what was going to happen to him. Um, that his life was going to end obviously but that he he looked at it from his wife's perspective and saw that he sort of said to himself well she didn't sign up for this you know she didn't sign up for she expected a person to be around for the rest of her, uh, of her life you know or for at least the major pro uh, proportion of her life and he he started to think about things from the perspective of who was going to change and he, he, he said himself he wasn't coming at this from a chauvinistic point of view but this was his job who was going to change the light bulbs who was going to take out the rubbish who was going to you know if there was a noise downstairs at night then you know he would obviously do that and uh, she would have to um, uh, so she would have to do this in, in future she wouldn't have that that partnership wouldn't be there um, so all those jobs that he used to do she would have to do them now you know and he said that was the, the perspective and he started running marathons and uh, multi-marathons so it was just it was from the perspective of his choice then he still he was still alive at the recording of this thing so um, and he said that he lasted three years longer than he was supposed to so he was living on bonus time now but it's it just struck me as being something that um, there is no uh, there is no meaning in life except the meaning that you give it you know that the the meaning from life is is the one that you assign to it you know without you assigning the meaning to your, to your life then your life is going to be meaningless so what is the meaning that you are attaching to your life and it's up to you to do that you know you have to nobody's going to come along and go well this is the meaning of your life because nobody can do that for you you have to do this for yourself and once you have that once you have that so stout in your mind then you can go on and that leads to then you expanding that and saying to yourself well is this conducive with trying to get to that meaning what values do I attach to that to that meaning and a whole range of things like that so anyway we cover a lot of this stuff in the B2 program if you're interested um, I will speak to you again in the next video thank you very much for listening and as I said um, if you have any any uh, any comments, leave them down below. I read, try and read as many of the comments as I can in the first 
uh, two or three hours and then you know as many as I can answer that but obviously a focus on the first two or three hours so leave a comment if you've got anything that you want us to cover any questions that you have um, and I'll speak to you again in the next video keep the alcohol out of your mouth I'm Kevin O'Hara for Habits Beat 2